Garfield boys won. And since my dad uh, was an assistant coach at Garfield, 1955 state championship team, when Garfield wins, the Inslee family is really, really happy. So everybody's a winner, and it's just fun to see. Congratulations mostly to Welp in it, though. I, I think that's the coolest win ever. Uh, a lot of good news in Olympia. I want to just share it. it it's really been, uh, I'm very pleased where we are in this legislative session. I uh, just want to address some highlights and stand for questions. First, our historic uh, uh, visit from President uh, Nestu uh, Finland. Uh, first time ever a head of state has addressed the Washington State Legislature. I think it was a particularly poignant moment for that historic event to occur. And he said something that really stuck with me. He said, you know, crisis can bring people together. And we have two crises that are bringing Washington and Finland together. One, the climate change crisis, and two, the, uh, the assault on democracy in Ukraine. And he, he said this has brought people together around the world, including Finland and Washington. And I really appreciated his visit. They're helping us a lot in developing our clean energy uh, companies. And it's been a really great to, to have a, a relationship with him. Uh, a comment on where we are in the legislative session. I'm very, very pleased where we are right now because we're making progress not just one, two, or three, but on multiple, multiple fronts. There are bills alive today that I'm very excited in making progress in the state of Washington. We're making progress on common sense gun reform. We're making progress on uh, uh, fighting climate change and building a clean energy economy. We're making progress on supporting behavioral health and advancing that cause. We're making progress on funding special education. And importantly, perhaps most importantly this year, we're making progress on, on uh, attacking the, uh, the housing and the homelessness crisis that we're now suffering in Washington State. And I'm very pleased we're making progress on multiple fronts in that regard, not just one. We're making progress on increasing the places we can build housing, we're making progress on the ability to accelerate the permitting so we can build housing. And we're setting the stage for going big so that we can actually make investments we have to make if we are going to fight in a meaningful fashion of the homelessness crisis. So I'm very pleased where we are on multiple fronts. Uh, obviously, there is more work to be done. I'm very happy that the Senate is advancing the cause of some reform of our police uh, pursuit policies. I hope the House will consider those proposals that the Senate has made. I think that some changes on adjusting that needle of where we set it on police pursuits, realizing there's always some danger of pursuits, but there's also a danger of further criminal conduct as well. I think that needle needs to change, and I hope the House will consider the Senate uh, proposal. Uh, I'm impressed on how much support we are receiving on advancing transit-oriented development and on helping middle housing so we can build housing for working families as well. And uh, both of those bills are moving. I want to comment on the incredibly broad coalition that is now advancing the cause of housing in the state of Washington. Uh, I'll show you a letter that this coalition has sent to legislators, which is, I, I think, the broadest coalition I've ever seen in state government, from uh, uh, labor leaders, business leaders, health care folks. All kinds of interests are allied to ask the state legislature to step up the plate and go big so people can go home. People understand this is necessary for our families, it's necessary for our economy, it's necessary for a peace of mind so that people don't have to live in squalor along our right-of-ways and in our parks and schoolyards. And I am, feel good about the appetite for this legislature actually to go big in this regard. Now, those issues will not be resolved for several weeks as the budget works its way through. I know legislators are anxiously awaiting the budget forecast in a couple weeks. I, don't, I think that will just set the stage for various serious discussions to make sure that we do not allow homelessness to become a permanent condition on the streets of the state of Washington. And I'm pleased about what I'm hearing from legislators to be open to going big this year. feel good about that. Um, we had made history last week with the first auction of permits under our cap and invest bill. 
I want to uh, compliment the Department of Ecology and their experts who set up this auction. They're very complicated to do, and it came off apparently without a hitch. Emitters now have to pay for climate pollution, and it has created a fund of $300 million, we think, in that ballpark that we can use to build clean energy economy, to help people get access uh, to cleaner sources of energy with less asthma and less pollution across the state of Washington. It's going to help a lot in our transition to a clean energy economy. Um, and by the way, the things that keep happening in our state, it seems like on a weekly basis, on building a clean energy economy, I could not be more thrilled. Washington State flew the first hydrogen-powered airplane in Moses Lake week before last. A couple months before that, we flew the first battery-powered airplane uh, in Moses Lake, uh, Washington. Uh, met with the, the Tacoma folks that are planning a green hydrogen hub uh, uh, a, a few weeks ago. The things that are going on our, along our state, the development of clean energy businesses, will just knock your socks off. And this auction that we had was again evidence that we are moving forward as a leading state in the fight against climate change. So good progress on that. Uh, some good news in the federal budget. The president proposed a budget today. It would, it would uh, ask the Congress for $8 billion for nuclear waste cleanup nationwide. This is a dramatic increase from previous years. It bodes very well for what we hope to have for the Hanford cleanup project. We don't have an exact number for that, but this gives about a billion dollars more room to be able to accommodate the Hanford budget. We hope that this will uh, translate to a significantly increased Hanford budget to really get down and honor the federal government's commitment to the state of Washington to finish the cleanup at Hanford. It is absolutely fundamental. The federal government owes this to the people of Washington, and I hope the budget uh, by the president is going, is going to allow us to get that job done. So I want to thank everybody, the president, all our congressional delegation, and particularly Senator Patty Murray, who has led this effort for several years now, as well as our tribal partners, who have been uh, really good advocates. So good news here in Olympia. Uh, we're maybe at halftime, and uh, we're really in the game, so I feel very happy where we are. That, happy to stand for questions. You want to go around the table? Uh, special education funding. Yes. Um, I saw that you mentioned it in your uh, uh, press release that you sent out. Uh, do you think that that goes far enough? Is there anything else that you would like to see before that bill, uh, before that legislation eventually makes it to your desk? So there's nothing specifically in the bill but we are always looking in the budget to accommodate special ed as much as we possibly can. I think there is a broad appetite to do that. And I feel pretty good that we're going to end up with a, a not insignificant increase in special education funding. So I'm, I think we're in good shape in that regard. Um, a bill to lower the blood alcohol concentration limit from 0.08 to 0.05 failed kind of at the last minute yesterday. Mm -hmm. Do you have any insight into why? Uh, I do not. I'm disappointed if that doesn't make it across the finish line. It may be one of those ideas that takes more than one year. This was a new idea for the legislature. and Not too infrequently, it takes a couple of years to, for a new idea to germinate. So I hope that will be the case. I was fully supportive of that making that change. The, uh, the death on our, on our highways, as you know, has, has increased, and impaired drivers have something like 50% of our fatalities as an impaired driver involved. So I'm hopeful if we don't have a re revival of that this year, that this issue again will be before legislative, legislators next year. The, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second there. You um, wanted to know what the best thing the government yeah, has it done? Yeah, your favorite time. Yeah, thank you, okay. Time. You know, the, uh, the bill dealing with pursuits, thank you, um, almost died yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, died in the House potentially earlier in the week was close uh, in the Senate. Did you get involved at all in that negotiation that was happening apparently behind the scenes? This is a top priority for a number of lawmakers, members of the public. Where does it rank on, on your list, and do you expect something to come out of this session and end up on your desk? Well, I was not involved in the internal discussions in the Senate yesterday, but I do want a bill to get to my uh, desk. I, as I indicated, I think we need to move this needle I think that's where the public is, and that's where I am. I think that the provision that's come out of the Senate is realistic, and it's meaningful, and I hope the House will carefully uh, consider it. 
and pass it. <laughs> Governor, after uh, President Nisto's visit on Monday, he went to Oregon. I'm wondering um, if you could tell us a little bit about your meeting with Oregon's governor. Yeah, so good, great meeting. It was my first meeting with the uh, new governor, and that was always uh, a joy. We had several topics, starting with the, uh, the bridge, the I-5 bridge over the Columbia. It was very productive. I thought we made progress on, on talking about a path forward on the bridge. And she gave me her thoughts about what she thought was the most realis realistic path through the, uh, uh, with the support of the Oregon legislature that I thought were realistic. And she evinced a real, I think, uh, interest in getting this job done. I see no unpassable un uh, un uh, obstacles to getting this job done. And, I'm, and one of the things I shared with her is how committed Washington is to getting this job done. And, and the reason I, my sort of proof point on this is that I had put in a billion dollars into my budget. And that's difficult because there were some delays of some things that we otherwise would want to do that, you know, frankly are politically difficult. But I wanted to show a commitment to Oregon to get this job done. I think she appreciated that. So I'm really happy that we went and, and had that uh, discussion with her. And it's just glad to see a new governor getting going in Oregon. Governor, yesterday the House passed the bill for restarting the process for siting a new airport. Is that a good idea? Should we start over? And are you convinced we need a new airport? Uh, I haven't thought about this, to be honest with you. So I'm going to have to give you an answer after I give that a little more thought. It's something that... I shouldn't say I was I'm not on my radar scope very much. I certainly are not ready to site a new airport, that's for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm abundantly clear on that. So this is something I'll be thinking about next week or two. I hope to have another discussion with you. Uh, it's not clear to me that it's necessary at the moment to restart that, but I will have to have another discussion with you in a couple weeks, I hope. Governor, this is kind of a two-parter. Um, House Bill 1240 was one of the two gun bills to win passage. The other was House Bill 1143 requiring a 10-day wait and safety training. Which bill do you think will have a bigger impact on day-to-day -day crime and gun violence? And if you had to choose one bill that you want to pass, which one would you pick? Well, you need to follow up and ask which one of my three sons I love the most, too. So that's a, it's kind of that kind of question. I think all three bills are very important. Each have a role to play. But I think the objective evidence that is available to us is that, uh, that bills that require some safety training so that you can show you have some modest degree of safety to recogni recognize the operation uh, of your gun have been shown through objective evidence to reduce gun violence. Connecticut has shown this. There's some research of states that have embraced this that's had some of the largest reduction in gun violence of any of the policies. Uh, this would also make sure there's a 10-day waiting period so people don't, in the midst of depression, go out and buy a gun and take their life or commit homicides. So uh, I am particularly keen on that uh, to tell you, but all of those are important. And as you know, uh, I've been a believer in assault and ban ever since I cast a vote in 1994 to ban assault weapons. It did reduce gun violence and mass shootings for 10 years while it was in place. And uh, I think the manufacturing liability is the right thing as well. So I hope the legislature will, will advance all three. Governor, the uh, Department of Commerce data shows that the state right-of-way initiative has brought in 268 people from freeway encampments. There has been a surge in these encampments across the state. Is the problem outpacing the solutions offered by the right-of-way initiative? Well, I think, uh, I think this is a statewide phenomena that clearly the homelessness crisis statewide is a result of three things, and they're all related. Number one, we have a mental health crisis in the state of Washington. Number two, we have a chemical addiction crisis. And number three, we have a lack of housing crises. And that is true on our right-of-ways, on our parks, on our street corners, and our schoolyards. It's not exclusively just for our right-of-ways. These are all three statewide crises. And all of them have to be addressed at the same time. It is not just a mental health crisis. It is not just a chemical addiction crisis. It is not just a lack of housing. It is all three. Now, here's the reason I say that. We have people that clearly need mental health treatment who are homeless. But you cannot get their mental health treated until they have a place to live. You can't treat mental health under a blue tarp. We have people who have chemical addiction problems, and they need treatment. 
And I believe the legislature is going to pass is going to pass me a good bill to make sure that happens. But you can't solve that under a blue tarp. We have to provide additional housing for people. And we have thousands and thousands of working people who've lost their apartments, even though they're working 40 and 50 and 60 hours a week because rents are going through the roof, who have no mental health problem, and who have no chemical addiction problem. All three of those things need to be addressed. And that those challenges are outstripping the available housing that we have. We have to build more housing. And so uh, that is why I'm asking le the legislature to step up the plate and address all three issues. The third issue of housing will only be successful if we face the music. And what I mean by that is you can't nickel and dime this problem. This is not a problem you can solve on the cheap. This will take billions of dollars of investment, and the private market will not make it. The private market will not make the investments that will give people affordable housing in the state of Washington. So we have to go big so people can go home. And I'm asking the legislatures to, to show a bold, visionary, and necessary commitment of that. And that's just not just in the right-of-ways. That applies for homelessness throughout uh, the state of Washington. Now, we are making progress in our right-of-ways. We have, we, have, we have about 17 of the housing encampments that we have targeted, uh, that we're in the process of closing. We've closed about 10 of them to date, and we're in the process of more. And we continue to identify new routes to move forward. As you know, I looked at one yesterday where we hope to have some answers fairly shortly uh, to reduce uh, uh, the problem associated in that one neighborhood. So there is more we have to do, or homeless, homelessness will become endemic and permanent in the state of Washington. And I really believe we're better than this. But we can't just curse the darkness and just think people are just going to all move to Oregon or Idaho. We need to get housing if we're going to solve this particular problem. Uh, Governor, you've gone on the record uh, speaking with the urbanists about your support for uh, the middle housing bill on the table this session, House Bill 1110 from Representative Jessica Bateman. Uh, I'm curious if you could uh, talk a little bit about why you requested her middle housing bill from last session, House Bill 1782, and uh, didn't request the current middle housing bill that's on the table uh, this session. Are there any changes to it that really uh, uh, excite you a lot more than last time? Well, I think uh, I'm really glad we started this discussion last year. Didn't get it across the finish line, but that set the table for this year's discussion and got people thinking about it. So I'm really glad we started this discussion last year. I really appreciate Representative Bateman's leadership. It's been tremendous because I think she's fashioned something that can get broad support, broader support, that can actually go pass into law. Uh, because of her acumen, there was a big vote for it in the House. So I'm very hopeful in the Senate. This is a critical bill. Because uh, you can't build a house if you don't have a place to build it. And right now, vast swaths of our cities are unbuildable. They're off limits. And uh, what her bill does is say, look, you can still build a single family dwelling. This doesn't eliminate single family buildings. They can still be built. But it allows you to build a duplex in places, which is necessary if we're going to solve this homelessness crisis. And I think she has... Uh, she has refined a bill that has a really good chance of passage, and I really appreciate her leadership. And people have been working really hard to find a, a consensus on this, and I think that it's in pretty good shape. Uh, Governor, there's a lot of local opposition to 1110. Um, uh, this week, Mercer Island City Council voted to support the TOD bill in the hopes that that bill would pass and that the rest of their, neighbor, the rest of their city wouldn't have to change very much. What do you have to say to local jurisdictions who are concerned about their neighborhoods changing? Well, what I would say, John Lovick said something I thought was very profound. I love John for a lot of reasons. And he was talking about this very issue that some people, we were talking about a different bill. We were talking about the 05 bill, actually. And he said he thinks all of us share the same two attributes. Number one, we really don't like change. And number two, we really hate the way things are. And we all share both of those at the same time. I have to believe the people of Mercer Island and this whole state do not accept rampant homelessness across our state. I don't believe people of Mercer Island find it acceptable to drive by and see children in, in under blue tarps 
with homeless single moms who lost their apartment because they got it, their car broke down, and to think that that's, that's acceptable. I don't believe the people of Mercer Island believe that. And the only way you're going to give that single mom a chance to have an apartment is to build more apartments and build more duplexes. And I believe the only way we're going to get that is if we pass this state legislation, because that's where leadership is going to take place to get this job done. And I think you've seen a really broad recognition of that with this big bill on the big vote on the Bateman bill and the transit oriented development bill. And when you look at the again, this comes back to scale. The things we've been doing are working. We are moving people into permanent housing. We are moving people into tiny house villages. We are insisting that people leave our runaways, our excuse me, our right of ways. When we find them a place, they have to go. So we are moving people off of our right of ways and out of these uh, illegal encampments. But you have to do that at scale if you're really going to solve this problem. And you cannot do that with, without significant more places to build housing. And that comes back to the Bateman bill. So I feel very comfortable in this, and I'm really happy how this bill has advanced. By the way, I should mention, this is not the only thing we're doing to try to increase housing stock. Uh, we have a bill that will help cities to, to accelerate permitting. Because right now, to build a house, you have to wait so long. There's something like $27,000 in costs associated by waiting for the permitting process. So we have a bill that will accelerate the permitting as well, help cities and counties get resources so they can accelerate getting the permit. That's an important uh, position as well. So there's multiple things we need to do, and we need to do them all at scale. Chris um nationally and in the state, Fentanyl overdose has become a problem. Mm -hmm. There are some bills in the House and the Senate looking to exclude fentanyl test strips from drug paraphernalia. Do you have any comment on this? When you say exclude from drug paraphernalia, you mean from the illegality? Yes. From the illegality? I haven't. I don't think there's a bill pending right now on this subject. You, you bring up an intriguing prospect, but I don't know that there's a bill on this issue right now. So I'd have to look more into that to find out my, my thoughts in this regard. I know you're downplaying when you use the word problem of fentanyl. It is a crisis. We all, we all recognize that. Uh, the tragedy that we're having is, is profound. I do believe there's every reason to believe the, that the legislature will forward to my desk bills that will allow and insist for people to get into chemical addiction treatment. And I think that that's very, very important. We are making progress on this. Uh, I went to a, uh, the dedication of the start of a crisis intervention center um, in Kirkland yesterday. Uh, very excited to get more community-based access. And mental health includes some chemical problems as well. And we've got to do more of those kind of things so people can get off these addictions. Any other softball questions or general criticisms? I'll have a follow-up question. Yeah. Uh, the the three uh, prongs of the housing strategy that Democrats have been touting is stability, supply, and uh, subsidy. Uh, the st stabilization bills kind of were the ones that didn't get the most traction this, mm -hmm. this session. Do you have any comment, especially as it rents continue to increase? Well, I think that that discussion will continue. But I also believe everyone, everyone understands that if you don't increase the supply, there won't be housing at any cost or any rent. If the housing is not there to live in, you can't solve this problem. So I think they're addressing the most important part of this leg of the stool, which is simply to have houses to live in. And as you've heard me say, we've had a million people move in, but we've only built 350,000 housing units. So everything we do in that, including allowing ADUs, <coughs> which is one of the methods of increasing housing stock is absolutely pivotal to solve that kind of problem. So I would say that's the longest leg in the stool, and I'm glad they're making progress uh, in this regard. Anything else? Thank you. To, yes. Sorry. I just wanted to ask about 1240 again. Um, some representatives yesterday expressed concerns that uh, the assault weapons ban wouldn't hold up in federal court because uh, of the Constitution. What do you have to say to that? Uh, I believe, even with the Supreme Court, that it will be held constitutional. That, that's my belief, and all of us could argue for days about this, but that is my belief. I believe it's the belief of our Attorney General as well, and we go, we go with that advice. With that, thanks very much. Be well. Thank you.
Wake up on the right side and make it a good day. I can't ride a bike. I was a bartender in college. One of my first jobs actually was Jamba Juice. I want to go skiing and surfing the same day. Fit in college played in a Celtic rock band. I love Trader Joe's. I love Whole Foods. I love asking people what their favorite items are at grocery stores. I was on the cover of Walmart when I was 12. Thanks for joining us on Seattle Sports Live. The excitement isn't over when the game clock runs out. Follow Fox 13 Seattle on TikTok for the latest updates on your favorite teams and videos just for fans.